Hey there guys, today I'm gonna to show you my latest project in my ever-growing arsenal of rain rotor harvesting projects, and that is my rain roof. I'll first show you how I built it, the structure that it originally started from, and then I'll show you how it works, what it is going to be supplying water to, and then at the end I'll try to answer a few of the questions that I'm sure I'm going to get as to why it is built where it is, uh, in the manner that it is built, the height, and <laughs> a bunch of things like that. So let's get started. The original inspiration for this project began about two years ago when I was tasked by Tough Tech's Roofing to conduct a desert exposure test of some of their roofing panels. No, this wasn't a video project that you might have missed, but rather it was an in-house test by them just to test their panels in a high desert environment. Once the test was concluded, I had a perfect prop on my hands and a rain roof was still on my mind, so that's what I set about doing. One of my main goals in this project was to utilize the existing structure as best I could so I could minimize the need for new materials. And the best I could figure was to make one continuous roof versus having the four separate frames you saw in the beginning. This would also minimize the need for gutter material since I would just have one end in which I needed to gutter. I tried to use all the old posts as framework to rigidize the new structure, but there were a few pieces on the end that you will notice I'm using just some regular scrap 2x4s. Once the main structure was all finished, I then gave it a coat of paint. If you are wondering why I chose white paint, I figured I had two different options since the frames were black and white, and white, quite simply, is just what I had the most of on hand. For the roofing surface I decided to use galvanized metal. This was not from a big box store but rather it was from a local outfit that forms this roofing from a big roll of steel. It was pretty cost effective, it came out to be just over 60 cents a square foot whereas I think a lot of big box stores are closer to a dollar a square foot and they will make it in any length that you want. I just got them in 7 or 8 foot long sections just for it to be easier for me to handle. Okay, so now you've seen how it got to where it is now from where it originally started from. Now let me show you how the rainwater is collected on the roof and eventually channeled down into the IBC totes at my rainwater garden. And here's how it works. After the rainwater is collected on the roof, it is channeled by this gutter to a 2 inch PVC pipe. On top of the pipe is a 4 inch to 2 inch reducer fitting that I just made by gluing a 2 inch coupling to a 4 inch end cap and then drilling a hole in the middle. Inside of that I have a piece of wire mesh to just filter out any bugs or debris. And then from there it takes approximately a 75 foot root down slope to an area where I have two IBC totes sitting to collect the water. The water is transferred by a simple means of level difference, meaning the outlet is lower than the inlet where the roof is. And you can kind of see that here. 
I've been waiting to show this system in the rain for a couple of weeks now, but it seems to be every time we get a rain, it is way in the evening after it started to get dark or when I'm at work. So I'm just gonna show you with the bucket right now. I'll take off this little elbow so you can see the water flowing through. But now I'll just walk up there, dump a bucket of water in, and you'll see it flow through here into the IVC tote. So now you've seen how the rain roof is set up and how it fills water into those tanks. What am I actually using this water for? Because this location is nowhere near my house. Well, this is actually my rainwater garden. I have a few videos on this, but it's an area where I grow seasonal plants during our monsoon rains off of just the rainwater. I've traditionally just used annual plants, but last year I started adding fruit trees. So I will post a link to that if you wanna see a little bit more about that. And now I'll just show you a couple of clips of uh, what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm gonna to try to answer some questions that I'm sure I'm gonna get from folks regarding various aspects of this system, specifically pertaining to the location of the roof, um, the resources involved, uh, why it is at the height that it is, um, if I could <laughs> locate the IBCs up here versus down there, various things like that. So let me try to answer those now. First question, location. Why is the rain roof located here versus up by my house or by my shop? As I mentioned before, this structure originally started out as a roofing test prop for Tough Tex Roofing. They asked me if I would test their roofing in a couple of different scenarios in a desert environment to see how it held up. And this was quite simply the best location where the roofing panels wouldn't get shaded from any of the <laughs> few larger trees I have on my property. And it would be out of the way so it wouldn't be on videos and different things like that. So they could kind of have an objective test for a year and a half or so. Um, and then the reason it stayed here simply is because I had the structure here I already had the post holes dug and I didn't really want to <laughs> move it somewhere else and have to dig a bunch of new post holes so is this the best setup for a rain roof in terms of resources used versus functions provided? Absolutely not. As I mentioned before, I was just trying to use what I had on hand for this, and this is what I came up with. Ideally, a rain roof should be incorporated into some other structure like a carport or a livestock shelter or something where you're getting more than one use out of. Maybe a porch or some sort of gazebo, for example, would be a great double-use structure for a rain roof. But you can go the opposite route and go a very resource minimal as my buddy Derek has. I'll post a link to his video down below. Um, but he built a rain roof very low to the ground using minimal resources. He just used cinder blocks, some ground ties, and two by fours to lay the roof just a foot or two above the ground, whereas he didn't have to build an entire structure to get a large, useful rain roof. And for his property out there, it's working really, really well, and I think is one of the best examples out there. Another question I think some of you may be wondering about is why I didn't incorporate the IBC totes or water tanks as part of the structure or underneath the roof. Yes, it would actually make for a really compact setup as well as protect the totes from the sun, but the quick and simple answer is that I already had them down by the rainwater garden all leveled out and I've been using them down there and I didn't feel like digging them a foot and a half down <laughs> as part of the roof just yet. But it is a great idea and something I've actually thought about quite a bit is using IBC totes as part of a structure, maybe one full wall of a carport or an awning structure so you can incorporate uh, part of your water storage within the structure as well as getting some shading benefit and things like that. 
On that note, that is part of my future plans to have a fully underground rainwater cistern up by my house is to incorporate some sort of rain roof on the top side of that and uh, also incorporate some solar as part of that project too because I know that is a huge question that people ask me a lot. So now I'll try to answer the question of cost of the various components of this system. Keep in mind the original roofing structure was built over two years ago, so I'll be estimating those costs. And these IBC totes were already a part of this rainwater garden area, so I'll also just give estimates on that. But starting up at the top, the original roofing structure as it was made for the roofing test cost between $450 and $500, but I don't believe that's indicative of a similar size structure setup as you see it now. Uh, uh, because I had to build that original structure to allow for the roofing panels to have separation in between them so that one would not affect the other during the test. Um, as for the roofing material, that was a rolled metal roofing that I got from a guy in Sierra Vista. It was 60 some cents a square foot um, and that totaled about $180 for the roofing. The gutter and those components was about $15 to $20 and then all of the piping coming to the IBC totes was about $65 to $70. The IBC totes, I don't exactly remember what I spent on those, but I've gotten them anywhere between $40 and $140, depending on the condition as far as uh, food grade or non-food grade, depending on your uses. But that is pretty much it in a nutshell. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what's next. And the last question I will try to answer is whether a rain roof set up like this is worth it for a small garden plot and some fruit trees. I think the answer is pretty clear. It is definitely not. There's way too much input for the potential rainwater harvesting output that you may get. If I didn't already have the structure of the previous roofing test already existing, I probably wouldn't have invested so much into this project. I would have done another billboard tarp style project where it is a much more bang for your buck as far as what you're putting into it and the water you're getting out of it. But as I mentioned earlier, I do plan on doing an in-ground cistern as a long-term future project with a larger rain roof incorporated. Uh, so I am planning or I'm using this as kind of like a small little test project so that I can tweak things and experiment with this um, in planning for that larger project. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this was interesting and maybe gave you some ideas for some rainwater harvesting projects of your own. As for me, I'm gonna head inside. It's just starting to sprinkle, which I'm hoping is gonna turn into a pretty good rain. If it does, I'll grab the umbrella and include some of that footage at the end. But uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Hit the subscribe button for more content like this if you wanna see it in the future. Uh, check me out on Instagram if you wanna see behind the scenes things of some of my projects. And uh, until next time, I'll see you next time or something. <laughs>